Hi, I'm Kevin and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be revisiting a video I made a couple years ago about heat exchangers. In particular, I'm going to be taking another look at this MSR heat exchanger because I've been told I was using it wrong. So about two years ago, I made a video about heat exchangers and I came to the conclusion that although they do provide greater efficiency and save you a little bit of fuel, that they really aren't worth it because overall you don't save as much fuel as the weight of the heat exchanger itself. So if you're a backpacker, you really get this. Every gram matters and if you're going to be carrying something new like a heat exchanger, um, you want to be assured that uh, there's some benefit to be offset for the added weight. Uh, in the case of a heat exchanger, you should be saving fuel, um, and enough fuel hopefully to, to justify carrying uh, a heavy heat exchanger. But uh, that's not what I found. What I found was that you did not actually save enough fuel to, um, to warrant bringing this heavier heat exchanger. So as a YouTuber, I get an awful lot of comments. Uh, the vast majority of them are positive, and I like that. That's great. People are usually just trying to say thank you for the video or, or connect, and that, that's wonderful. And other times, people like to tell you you're doing something wrong. And uh, you know what? I, I read and listen and think about all those comments. Sometimes they're just frivolous, and um, the person doesn't know what they're talking about, and I just ignore those. But sometimes, um, especially when you get consistent comments, about the same thing and they're from rational people um, it gives you pause and uh, that's exactly what happened here the comments I got said that I should not be using the heat exchanger flat with the bottom of the pot like this I should be mounting my heat exchanger lower that way it will be more efficient it'll trap more heat and can and put more heat back into the pot so that's what this video is about we're gonna we're gonna test that out so even though folks were very consistent in suggesting that the heat exchanger should be below the bottom of the pot, they were inconsistent in terms of how much. Tim Moffat suggested that it should be half an inch. Richard Himes said at least a half an inch. Jim Fife uh, recommended three quarters of an inch. And uh, Marzit recommended more than an inch, somewhere between one inch and two inches. Um, I have tried that. I have tried to lower it as far as I can go down. The problem is there's a, a, a connector here and once you lower it beyond like an inch and a quarter, um, it's going to fall off because it, it, it no longer tightens around the pot properly. Now let's take a, a, one more look at one of those commenters, Jim Fife. He let me know that he was the product development manager with MSR uh, when the heat exchanger came into being. So he was part of its development. He did hundreds of boil tests. And so you know what? Um, that's one more uh, good piece of rationale for, for redoing this test. Now in my defense, when I made that first video, I did a whole lot of research on heat exchangers and I went to the MSR website looking up the product, uh, could not find any instructions at all that said that the pot should be lower than the bottom of the, of the exchanger. And when I got um, comments after that first video was made, I uh, contacted MSR and, and asked them about that and I received no comment from the company. So this is the MSR heat exchanger. It is uh, simply a band of corrugated brass. It's got a couple holes here and a hook. You can uh, put that hook in the appropriate hole for the size of pot that you're going to use. Then you can put your pot inside the heat exchanger. Um, and then there's this little screw here that allows you to tighten the exchanger around the pot. The idea here is that when you put your pot on your stove, the heat from the stove is going to contact, make contact with the bottom of the pot. Um, that heat is going to move out and up around the, the pot as the heat rises. And that heat exchanger is going to capture some of the heat and transfer it back into the pot, making the, the whole system a little bit more efficient. It certainly is more efficient. The last time I did a boil test um, with the exchanger flat against the bottom of the pot, um, I did um, see some uh, efficiencies, but those efficiencies weren't what um, MSR was promising. So let's go take a look at the MSR website and see what information they now provide. On the website they state that the exchanger will provide efficiencies of up to 25%. The exchanger does fit a whole wide variety of MSR cooking pots, which is great. The exchanger weighs 170 grams. And now the MSR website, uh, it says that the heat exchanger should be mounted one half inch below the bottom of the pot. So what's going on here? So what's going on here? Well, I think one of the main issues at play here is safety. If you're using a multi-fuel bottle like this that has a braided cable between your burner and your fuel bottle, um, you're going to have a very safe system. Uh, adding 
the uh, heat exchanger in its lowest position over your stove is not going to affect your uh, fuel bottle. But um, a lot of backpackers like these uh, canister stoves, as, as do I, because they're, they're lighter than this other system. And if you're using the canister stove um, with your heat exchanger in its lowest position, you're going to be transferring a lot of heat uh, and holding a lot of heat under the stove and you risk heating up that fuel bottle and potentially having an explosion. So I don't know for sure, um, but I suspect that MSR simply dropped mention of uh, mounting the heat exchanger lower uh, just for a safety precaution. They didn't have any information on their website and I think they assumed that uh, for safety reasons most folks were going to use the stove in this configuration. Perhaps they've done some research since, perhaps they found out that uh, half an inch um, isn't a problem and you do get some added efficiencies. So let's test this out. Let's, uh, let's go get some gear and uh, do some boil tests. I'm gonna boil uh, two cups of water with and without the heat exchanger and with the heat exchanger mounted in different positions. So this is my setup. I have a canister stove. I've got a cooking pot with an MSR heat exchanger and a lid for that pot. I have two cups of water uh, and I'm going to carefully measure that each time I do this and add it to the pot. I'm going to add a temperature probe to that water. Um, that's going to allow me to track the temperature of the water as it comes up to boil. It'll also tell me when that water hits 100 degrees Celsius, then I can shut off the experiment. So before I do my boil, I'm going to weigh my canister, um, my canister, my stove and my fuel. And then uh, when I start the experiment, I'm gonna light my stove. I'm gonna put my pot on as quickly as I can. I'm gonna turn the stove up to full and hit my start button. I'll track the temperature and when this uh, does come up to boil, I'll shut it off as quickly as I possibly can. I'll remove the pot and I will weigh my stove canister and fuel and subtract the difference to determine how much fuel I consumed. Now I'm using my canister stove instead of my uh, liquid fuel stove because the canister stove is lighter and it's going to give me more resolution on the scale. Um, but for safety, what I'm going to do to prevent the, the canister from heating, I'm going to put a cool cloth, a cool wet cloth, around the canister for each boil. Now I think this is going to be pretty important when the heat exchanger is in a low position, but for consistency I'm going to do this each and every time. I'm going to wet my cloth um, with fresh cold water each and every burn regardless of if I'm using the heat exchanger. So what I'm really going for here is as much consistency as I can achieve. Um, I'm gonna do multiple burns of the heat exchanger in different positions, and I'm gonna be using the average value from each. I'm also using a pressure regulated stove, which should help me um, with more consistent pressure out of my stove and, and more consistent heat for each of these boils. And I'm also gonna randomize the burns so that the stove pressure uh, really won't be a factor. The water that I'm using uh, in this experiment will, will always be at a consistent temperature and I'm going to let the stove, the pot and the heat exchanger cool down between these experiments. So let's talk results. Um, without the heat exchanger, two cups of water boiled in about three minutes. Uh, with the heat exchanger mounted in different positions, I got a much faster boil time, uh, usually about two minutes, 30. What is really quite interesting is that without the heat exchanger, the pot seemed to heat up quite faster to up to about 35 degrees Celsius. And after that, um, the heat exchanger burns all seem to catch up and then provide that faster boil. I suspect that this is because with the heat exchanger added to the pot, there's, there's more metal to heat up and it, it takes a little while to do that. Once that metal does come up to temperature, it then provides that uh, greater efficiency.
Now the fuel consumption results are really quite interesting. Without the heat exchanger, it took 11.5 grams of fuel to, to boil two cups of water. With the heat exchanger mounted flush with the bottom of the pot, I consumed on average 10.5 grams of fuel per boil. With the heat exchanger mounted a half an inch below the bottom of the pot, I only consumed 9.5 grams of fuel on average. And with the heat exchanger a full one inch below the bottom of the pot, I only consumed 9.25 grams of fuel on average. So I think those results are pretty clear and it was clear that uh, I was doing it wrong. You're certainly going to get a lot more efficiency out of the MSR heat exchanger if you lower it in relation to the bottom of the pot. Um, the more you lower it, the more efficient it is, but there is a limit to this because at about an inch and a quarter, um, it becomes a little unstable uh, in terms of its grip on the pot. So that's great. It's good to know that we can get more efficiency out of the heat exchanger and, and approach those numbers that are being advertised by MSR. But how does this compare uh, with those other factors of weight and cost? The MSR heat exchanger weighs 170 grams and it now costs $80 Canadian. Two years ago when I made that first video, it only cost 50 bucks. These fuel canisters that I'm using hold about uh, 227 grams of fuel and they cost about seven and a half dollars. That's about three cents per gram of fuel. So if you want to break even for weight, you're gonna to have to do 170, 85 or 75 burns respectively for each of the different uh, scenarios that I tested here. So even if you always mount the heat exchanger in its optimal position at one inch below the bottom of the pot, you're still gonna to have to do 75 boils on a trip before you really um, see the benefit, um, be before the, the weight savings of the fuel offsets the weight of the heat exchanger itself. Now 75 boils on a trip is quite a long trip. Uh, imagine you're doing a very uh, aggressive use of your stove at three to four boils per day. Um, that trip is still going to have to be 18 to 25 days long if you're solo. So um, things are starting to get a bit more reasonable here, um, starting to see some value in it, but really nothing for a, a solo tripper in, in, in most length of trips. Perhaps um, group trips um, and trips in the winter when you're using the stove a lot more, that, that might start to be reasonable, but we're still talking um, a fairly long trip. So let's talk about the cost savings. Certainly uh, if you mount the heat exchanger properly and uh, you use the stove often, you're gonna offset the costs of that expensive $80 heat exchanger, but it's gonna take 1,185 boils to do that. That's an awful lot of boils in the lifetime of uh, your pot set. So let's say you do go out and buy that expensive $80 MSR heat exchanger. Let's try and figure out how many years it's gonna take for you to uh, offset the cost of that purchase by the fuel that you're saving. Now there's probably a lot of folks who, who do a lot more tripping than I do and, and camping, but um, a good year for me uh, would be 30 to 40 nights sleeping out in a tent. Uh, and that's probably more than most folks uh, in the general population, it's probably way more than most folks. Uh, but let's use that as an example, 40 nights. It's pretty aggressive, but let's use that. Uh, and let's assume that you're doing three to four boils per day. At that rate, it's still gonna take you um, about seven to 10 years before you're gonna save enough money on fuel to justify the cost of the heat exchanger. So I was certainly doing it wrong. I was certainly using the heat exchanger incorrectly. You can definitely get a lot more efficiency out of it um, if you mount it below the bottom of the, of the pot itself. But you know what, I think it's still quite questionable whether or not the heat exchanger offers you enough benefit in fuel savings to offset the weight of the exchanger itself in your backpack or uh, the cost of the exchanger itself, especially now that it's uh, gone up in price. So that heat exchanger is gonna make a lot more sense uh, the longer your trip is or the more people that you bring on that trip. If that pot set is cooking for four people, I'm gonna estimate that you're gonna break even on weight somewhere between five and six days. Okay, so that's my revisit of heat exchangers. My eyes are open a little bit more now. I, uh, I understand much better about how heat exchangers work and how to use the MSR heat exchanger properly. Um, but I'm still uh, skeptical um, on their use. I think they do have a place. That place is certainly on longer trips with more people. Um, that's, that's probably the only scenario where they make sense. Anything less than that, and it doesn't make, in my mind, it doesn't make sense to bring the heat exchanger. The heat exchanger is also really pricey now at 80 bucks Canadian. And you know what? I just don't think it's worth the purchase.
So this may not be my last video about uh, the MSR heat exchanger. An awful lot of other folks commented um, that they love to use the heat exchanger in cold conditions uh, when they're winter camping, melting snow and ice. So there's probably some areas to test it out there. Certainly the more you use the stove, um, the more you benefit from its efficiency. And of course you need to use it correctly. All right guys, thanks a lot for watching the video. Um, I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please hit like, share and subscribe. Um, as always, I hope you find time to get outdoors and have a great day.